Hey everyone, Victor here from Mapster coming to you on a hot, bright Vancouver summer day. Today I'm going to go over the user submission uh, feature in Mapster WordPress Maps, our WordPress plugin. Uh, this is quite a big feature that has a lot going on, so uh, this video is going to be a little bit long and probably quite complicated with a lot of uh, kind of different features happening uh, across each other. So I think it's the best way to understand this feature. Um, and uh, it has a lot built in um, and so like check out the documentation check out this video and then definitely feel free to get in touch with us if you are building a complicated site that involves user submission because uh, you're probably inter uh, interlocking a lot of different pieces of our plugin together and you might not be sure how they're all going to work but that being said let's just start uh, first by just showing this interface and then we'll go through the back end and kind of how it works. So the idea is that you'll have a map on your site <clears throat> and you'll be able to add these buttons that allow a user to submit a point and or edit a point if they've already submitted them or if they already exist on the site. So to submit a point the user will just press the button. They can select between different categories that you've selected uh, for them to be able to choose from. These can be whatever you want. Maybe you want them to be able to add parks or local landmarks or whatever. Um, they'll click on one. Then they'll uh, be able to add a point. They can do this, in this case, only through a map click. But another way that's possible to do is to have an address search, like a geolocation. They'll type in an address. They'll click that. Then they'll have to move the map around until this target is on the spot that they want it to be. So they can zoom in and move things around. And then they'll press capture point. It'll say your selection saved. Okay, it's good. They can either do it again if there is an error or press confirm. And then it'll pop up a form with any extra information you've chosen that you want them to also submit when they are creating their point. In this case, I have some sample stuff about schools. Um, and I'll just type in sample school and we'll press submit. And that will then save, and then they can go back to the map. The point doesn't get added immediately. It will take a reload, or uh, there's some options that um, it might not be published right away, and I believe that's the case in this case. So that's the submission um, interface. So we'll go, well, we can, we can look at editing. Um, you know what, let's just look at editing right now. So if I press edit point, um, then a little search form will pop up and I can search for a given point that I know I've created or something. So in our case, let's just search for school. Um, oh, that's not there. Uh, I know I have one called Loving It on the back end. So um, Loving It comes up and I can press edit. And then here we go. I can change the map location by pressing this button and I'll go through that same process again of the target and all that or I can change some of the information here and press save. And there are some user permissions around this, although we're building out a couple more um, just to make sure users can only change their own points or only get their own points listed or, or that sort of thing. We're, we're refining this a little all the time. Um, so let's exit out of this and let's learn a little bit about how this works in the back end and all the different options that are available. So if we come into the back end, uh, what you first want to do is when you install Pro, you'll want to come over to Advanced Options in your Settings and turn on User Submission. This just turns on a few things in the back end so it'll work. After you see that, um, after you've turned that on, you'll see that User Submissions, this new post type, has appeared here. And this is where all our uh, information will appear. So you can see this is actually the one I just submitted. Um, we'll go over why it's called an untitled, but you can see here I have sample school right there. So this is the sample post that I just created. Um, it also has the category that I selected. So everything will be stored in here. You can also CSV export if you want to get everything into like a spreadsheet format for some other purpose. Um, and that'll take the geography as well as all the other custom fields that you've added um, and the ID and, and these kinds of things. Okay, so if we were to create a new map, um, I already fired one up, but let's just let's just do it again from scratch. We would go to maps, press add new, and we could, you know, whatever sample map. And then we would come in here to user submission, this section, press enable submission. And now we can set up a lot of the options that we saw at play in the example. So you can select different categories, which will be those first few categories that they can choose from. Um, these can also be customized uh, with their icon and the text in the category section. Um, let's just take a quick look here. Um, if we go to cat two, 
we can see here, here's the icon that I was using and here's the little description. So that'll allow you to add some more detail when people are selecting categories, so it's not just the name of the category. So you can select any number of different categories. You can choose to include an address search or not. Uh, if you do include it, you want to include a Mapbox uh, geocoder token just so that the, it's a nice address search. And this is your type, kind of type an address and options appear and you can choose one and it'll center the map. Um, then you can enter what you want the title field to be. So this is why our, our stuff is uh, untitled. We will be able to um, type in an, an advanced custom fields field. We'll go over that. Uh, we'll come back to this in just a second so you can really see what's at play here, but you can make sure that the title field is one of those fields that the user fills in. In my case, I might want to make it the school name field. Right. Um, then once I've created some of this, uh, we'll get some submission um, short codes. I actually do need to press publish on this page for those to show up because it needs to have an ID associated with the map. Um, so once I do that, you can see here are a couple of the short codes. So there's a create point short code and that'll make the create point button and the edit point button. And you can put these anywhere on the page as long as they're on the same page with the map. Uh, and there's a couple options here. You can see it says you can create point or edit point. You can change the button text or the header text, which you can see as the button text here. And the header text is, is in the modal. And you can also make the modal uh, smaller if you want. By default, it's large and it will fill the whole screen. So those are some kind of interface options. Um, now to go into the admin section, uh, there's a couple cool options here. One is an allowed area. So this will allow you to use a polygon that you've created separately in Maps to WordPress Maps as like a restricted area. So that that's the only place that the users will be able to submit points onto. Otherwise, they'll be given an error message that says like your point is outside the allowed area. Please try again. So this can keep it restricted so you don't have people submitting points everywhere. Um, template posts are something we use in a couple places in this plugin. And the idea here is that you don't necessarily want every post that a user submits to just be like the default black marker. You might want it that um, it, it might be like a blue marker or it might be like a circle or it might be uh, some kind of icon that you want to just you don't want to have to go in and like manually restyle it. So what you would do is you would create an example of that post in a locations, uh, in your locations um, post uh, types here, and style it just how you want. And then you would select it here as the stylistic base, basically. And then Now we do have an additional thing that if you're using multiple categories and you want it to be styled differently depending on which category they've added, you can select multiple templates. The important thing here is that if you have multiple categories, let's say we have multiple categories, uh, it just keeps appearing, there we go. If you have multiple categories, you want to make sure that the template posts are in the same order as the category. So cat2 will line up with 3D model test and cat2 will line up with Albertville. And if that's, if I want it to be the other way, I can just grab this and drag it in front, right? So these do have to be in the same order. That's important. That's how it knows which templates uh, line up with which categories, okay? Or you can just select one for everything. You can also choose to select administrators or other users who will get an email every time someone submits a point. So basically they can go to the site and approve it or check it or just know about it. Uh, we also have permissions that are just very basic that, and this applies to, for now, uh, it applies to both creating points and editing points. Uh, and these include public or only people that are logged in or only people that are administrators. Um, finally, we have it whether you can, uh, whether you want posts to be immediately published and immediately put onto the map on the next reload, or if they stay in draft format until somebody comes in, like an administrator, comes in and actually like checks them over and approves them. Okay, so that's, um, those are our general options. Okay, so now uh, one of the last important parts here is how do you get those custom forms to get set um, so they appear on on the editing screen, like right after they add the point, uh, how do you get those fields to appear? And associated with that, how do we get this title field?
So for this, we do have to kind of mash together a couple plugins. It's not too hard uh, if you're you know dedicated to creating this, but it does take a little bit of finesse. So what we have to do is we have to go to we have to install advanced custom fields. Um, this is already automatically installed with WordPress with Mapster, uh, but you, you'll need to install it manually just so you can access the interface. Uh, it's just a very simple plugin. Uh, you can just look up advanced custom fields through the WordPress store and you'll install it uh, there. After you do that, you'll see there's custom fields section here. And in this, uh, in my case, I have, I made a new field group. And in this field group, I create a bunch of fields. Now, to learn how to use advanced custom fields, you can look up some other uh, documentation. There's lots and lots of options. You can add all kinds of different fields, text, image, uploads, select buttons, radio buttons, child fields of all these other types. So there's a lot here, very, very flexible, which is why we chose to use it. However, one of the important things is once you've created a bunch of these fields, you need to create the same thing in the location section rules these rules need to apply the post type both to user submission which is our post type that was created here and to the location I mean it's actually an or but it needs to apply it to both of them to the user submission and to the location type okay this is just because some of the ways that the back end creates those template posts so that they're all populated with all the proper information needs them to be attached to both okay and you have to create your template post after you've done this so you'll you'll make your form you'll attach it to both post types then you'll go over to your maps create a location that is your template location with all your template styling and and create it then or at least you have to update it after this this is just because then it in the back end it gets all these fields associated with it so when the new post is created it it has all the information that it needs to get saved properly into the back end okay so this is this is important um, just to set this up press update and then update your template posts now the last thing is to get that title field working. So here you can see we have different names that have come up with the fields. All we have to do to choose our title field is pick the name that we want. We copy that and we will throw it into our, uh, wherever our map is. We'll come back to our map and come down here and we would just type in school name. And that way we'll know, it'll always know that school name is the title to give to the appropriate post. So that's the user submission functionality generally. There's a few little ins and outs here that you might want to, you know, interlink with other features in Wetmapster, but definitely get in touch, leave a comment, or, uh, you know, let us know a new way that this could be better if you want. Um, but hopefully that all makes sense. Take a look through the documentation and hope to see you make some really awesome uh, user interactive sites with this feature. Thanks very much.